uh, the aspects in GST, they are aspects in services as I, as I, uh, as I had my experience in field also. Uh, the uh, uh, the uh, knowledge about this, uh, so the, the, this topic is very low. So uh, with that, I'll you know first again welcome all of you and uh, I'll uh, request all of you to take uh, uh, full benefit out of this. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for such encouraging words. I am happy to share that today we have with us Sri Sachin Menon, Chairman GST Task Force Fiki. Firstly, I would like to introduce Sri Sachin Menon, the Chairman GST Task Force Fiki. He has wide experience in working with various renowned companies and has vast experience in the matters of taxation and indirect tax policy. He has also been associated with various advisory committees on matters related to indirect taxation. Sri Sachin has four decades of experience in handling indirect taxes, which includes 16 years with various MNCs, local corporate in management roles, and 23 years with global consulting majors. His areas of functional expertise include GST, VAT, customs, service tax, central and state value, added tax, Lodge, etc. Welcome, Sri Sachin Menanji, for keeping his views on the today's subject. Has he joined Sachin Menon? Uh, Mr. Yes. Sachin, are you there in the webinar? Yes, sir, uh, Sachin. Sir, this with his, I, I, I cannot find his, you uh, know, not available uh, in video. In that case, sir, we will go back to uh, Bank it Assurance, sir. Good evening, sir. Am I audible? I got the news that he's joining. Uh, we can still wait for two minutes. If he doesn't oh, join, okay, sir, let us wait for two minutes. I think we can start Chalindraji, the webinar. He can, uh, you know, he can join and give his views later. Sir, we will, we will be taking the views of Mr. Sachin at a uh, later stage. Now for the presentation, I would like to introduce Sri Venkateswaran, who brings with him 35 years of service experience in Central Revenue Department while holding various positions at various places and retired as Assistant Commissioner, Group A Officer of Indian Revenue Service in January 2018. Welcome, Sri Venkateswaranji. 
हेलो दिस सचिन मेनन हियर अच्छा वेंकटेश रंजीत सर कैन वी गो बैक टू सचिन मेनन सर ओके ओके मिस्टर सचिन मेनन यू कैन स्पीक या आई कैन yeah actually this is sent into my whatsapp uh, not in the email that's why the end of problem happened yeah you can speak now yeah, please please can i yeah yes yes please yes yeah thank you sorry for the the delay um Honorable Additional Director General DGTS Sri Amish Kumar Gupta, Assistant Director um, Sri Shailendra Kumar, today's faculty and retired Assistant Commissioner Sri Vengadeshan, Senior Officers of uh, of Revenue, ladies and gentlemen. the taxation of service has always been a complicated issue subject to whether it is in the service tax era or it is uh, uh, in the gst regime one of the main reason for the complication is the intangible nature of supply and the law could not mandate with clarity what constitutes the supply of service and what constitutes proof of delivery of service you may be aware that under the earlier regime prior to the gst service was taxed under the finance act 1994 by the central government whereas works contract services and transfer right to use goods services were taxed by the state governments which led to double taxation this dispute between state and central officers gave rise to the protracted litigations as to what components of a works contract contribute taxable value under vat and service tax we have many landmark judgments such as canon dangerly builders association of india from the honorable supreme court giving guidelines as to what component of a works contract can be taxed by the center and the state governments under the service tax and vat regime with the introduction of gst we thought that this litigation will come to an end since both central and state governments got equal right to tax services simultaneously but that is not to be from what our indication we have thus far as you know the definition of service under section 2 subsection 102 of the cgst act lays down that service means anything other than goods money and securities but include activities related to use of money or its conversion by cash or by any other form currency or denominations for which a separate consideration is charged this definition is wide enough to cover most of the transaction other than goods and hence become a significant contributor of revenue to the gdp it is also interesting to note that the law defines the recipient of service as the person who is responsible for making the payment of consideration not necessarily the person who receives the service service become more complicated since there are restrictions imposed on availability of credit on certain services under section 175 of the gst act which includes works contract services which led to major litigation in various high courts and currently before supreme court i'm case in the point is the safari retreat which you are all awaiting the final decision there are various provisions relating to supply of a service which is applicable to the day to day service transactions such as uh, reverse charge time of supply of service what is an exempt service provisions related to isd supply to distinct persons restrictions on availing input credit on services deemed services etc which i am sure the learned speaker on the subject shri vengadeshwaran would be taking up in this webinar i personally feel that though taxation of service is not a new subject to revenue officers of the central government 
it is rather a new subject for the state GST officers. Hence, there may be an urgent need to train the state GST officers on the nuances of taxation of service under GST. On behalf of FIKI and on my personal behalf, I thank the officers of the Direct General of Taxpayer Services for inviting me as a speaker for today's webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Sri Sachin Menanji, for your opinion, views, and sharing hands on experience. Now, for the presentation, I would like to introduce Sri Venkateswaran, who brings with him 35 years of service experience in Central Revenue Department while holding various positions at various places and retired as Assistant Commissioner Group A Officer of Indian Revenue Services in January 2018. Welcome Sri Venkate Suran. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Am I audible, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shall I go ahead? I wait for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening to everybody. So, one more time joining with the DTPS for the webinar on account of the service sector. Definitely the uh, topic is a very interesting as said by our chairman Fiki tax uh, task force committee. It is a challenging definitely. It is not only from today. It started from way back from 1994 and it has grown from 94. Three services earlier on the telephone, stock brokers and insurance. It grown to beyond certain level. Then after 2012 onwards, we got a entirely different regime called a negative service tax wherein we are having a services for anything and everything, the definition, excluding certain services called, which is called a negative, which is not taxable under the service tax regime. And by and large, I think I found this since I worked in the department for more than 30 years and the handling the service tax. By and large, many of the provisions of the erstwhile service tax also incorporated in the GST regime also. So as it's said, it is a, there are distinguished differences between the levy of service tax on the goods and also on the particularly on the services also so thank you very much for the dgps and my respect for the additional commissioner then officers of the dgpa then Piki chairman Piki and their members and all other participants thank you very much sir with these few words let me share my powerpoint and start the session because we do not want to take more time i'm having a really since it is a very large subject i have taken around 80 to 90 slides. I do not know how much I'm going to handle, but still we will, once we share the PPP, you'll be able to understand. And also you can also enable you to read, which are the more relevant for your taxation on account of the services. I will be explaining certain things. I will also find end of session will take some questions, which will be required immediately for that. I do not want to take since, you know, anyway, it is a very complexity and some of the complex queries we cannot answer on this forum. Then I will be answering some of the requirement, which is very much required for the new entrant into the GST. So with this introduction, let me go share my PowerPoint. So thank you very much once again. So I'll just check. Sir, is my PowerPoint is visible to everybody, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Since I am not opening one more case, normally I will have a two, one more uh, these things. But today it is saying it is not possible. It is not opening. So I find it slightly difficult. Uh, nothing more than that. One second. I will go from the first slide onwards. Okay. Thank you very much once again for the participation for the webinar. So today's session is on account of the services in GST and overview. So we are not going for an in-depth analysis of each and every aspect of service tax, but definitely we are going to give you, enable you to make understand the 
very important aspects on account of services assets are by our adg at the beginning of the session there are definite uh, requirement to understand like the most important the sar says about the place of provision which is definitely a complex one particular provision and also some of the provisions like you can say supply of there's a time of supply there also we have a different these things so i'll explain each and everything once in the slide show goes so as usual it is a disclaimer this views are expressed only for the understanding the law in a very simple terms for the new entrant to the, the gst region definitely we do not want to handle the legal provisions of all these things for all legal provisions please for the acts rules notification and in fact in this in with the services number number of notification is there circular has been issued to clarify what is the intent of the government on account of the service the levy of service tax the gst and the services and also depending upon the requirement of the trade and industry also we are at the gst council meeting they discuss all these things with reference to classification value place of provisions etc in fact recently we are also discussion about the place of provision with reference to ocean freight also there they have given a very clear instructions what is the place of provision and also the very recently in 23 they have given i think at least not less than 5 to 6 circulars on account of services i will be giving the details at the end of this session also so any reference we have to understand it is cgst and sgst because until or there is some certain distinct requirement for the state levy otherwise it is a both sections and numbering all same for the each and every taxation law so one more request you know very well they we are doing a webinar and that times we are playing i am also from a remote place and i newly shifted my place house from some other place to this place so there may be some internet issue if come these things but however i am having a backup also but it may be interrupted very few seconds or few minutes so in that if it happens i regret for the inconvenience caused to the participant but i will be restore this immediately so today's topic we are having taxation on services prior to gst and taxation on services after gst and the concept of levy in gst on service sector because there are a, as i told there are different the even though the sections are same but the wordings with reference to service provision is entirely different it requires a treatment as said by our fiki chairman also service is nothing but it is an intangibility so when there is an intangibility it's a taxing intangibility is a challenge for the global taxation also so wherever it is it, they are having the, the, this type of complexity is existing so because of that we will be understand service because you know very well the service sector is growing very fast than normal agriculture sector as well as the manufacturing sector so this is one of the most the gdp producing industry but of late there is a sluggish in the market also but nevertheless there will be a growth in the service sector very shortly now you know the ai powered all these things are coming into picture so definitely this sector will be moved very much forward in the come years to come then what are the litigations though the litigations are there there is a specific litigations are required with reference to sections required for your on understanding the tax on the services then i will some important definition i will refer and wherever it is required i will give a slightly detailed information about the definition explanation for the important sections also i have taken and some circular issued by cbc particular 2023 24 they are not issued 23 there were a large number of circulars are issued after the council meeting so that i will also informing how best you can understand this so service sector indirect tax prior to and after gst this is our first so early to service tax there is supply that is a concept of the goods and service tax we had a separate taxes on account of services manufacturer sales so during that period the central government has levied service tax services the indirect tax on services as a service tax as per chapter 5 of the finance act 194 i told it is started way back in 94 when our honorable ex prime minister mr manmohan ji was there the finance minister should introduce and that time we had only three services and slowly it started increasing increasing and at, at a point of time it is before that is somewhere in 112 it reached a service about 120 services so there is a growth was sector was immense then we are embraced this system called a negative service tax regime from 17 2012 onwards and from that day also we can say the service tax has been a the tax on services has been imposed on many of the services either through not coming under the service sector 
there we had a only very few services we had a definition for the negative service accept this negative services all other services fall under the liability under service tax that was the concept during happened during 2012 then in the case of state they are leaving this particular services and hotels and restaurants and works contract and entertainment tax and betting with reference to works contract act there was a concurrent levy by the service tax department and as well as by the vat department but fortunately we had this thing specific exemption when there is a tax liability on account of goods then that person is not tax in the services and similarly in the case of there be a works counter levied by the works counter by the bad regime they said the service portion is excluded that's why the state government has given a very many high courts have given a judgment 70 30 ratios 30 percent they have to give the goods and 70 percent or 70 percent goods and goods or 30 percent depending upon that that was the reason they have given particularly to levy only one levy not cannot be imposed for the on both occasions and entertainment now it is it, either it was done by local government as well as this thing wherever local government is not living it was levied by the bad regime that is a state government uh, that is a commercial tax department so betting that is also happened by the levy of the state government that is a domain of the state government earlier after the introduction of gst that levies which were either to levied on services both by central and the uh, bad department state department and local bodies as subsumed you know very well all these tax are subsumed so entertainment tax in the gst regime what is the supply of service or tax on service is nothing but the combination of entertainment tax that is earlier it was levied by state that was subsumed and service tax along with other components of says which is introduced in very many years kalyan kirti kalyan says and swachh bharat says all these things is also subsumed and the luxury taxes which is levied on the theaters also subsumed and we are having a theaters on account of this now recently we also the gaming industry online gaming industry also coming into the gst net so all these services either to levied by state and central by different uh, this thing now has been subsumed in gst that was now you will be uh, as said by our fiki chairman still i find uh, some of the state government officials and even trade and industry is not very much aware of what is the constitute the taxability on the services so thankfully our dg system dg director of taxpayer services has selected a topic which was definitely good for the people to understand so that the litigations can be reduced on account of misunderstanding on account of the services so now we have started audit and also inspections by the state government department where we i find the most of the objections is based on the non levy of selection the non levy of or collection of tax on the mostly on the services that was earlier also happened also now it is a scope is widened the state government officers are definitely making so many investigation reports or audit paragraph on account of the levy of the missing levy of service so levy of service on service tax important aspects of what a person ought to know with reference to gst act so here we are having a taxation called your uh, legislations we have to understand important sections we have to understand definition we have to understand and we have to understand scope of supply that is actually this is the parameter which is very much required for understand what constitute the taxability constitutes nothing but uh, that is a scope of supply then again we want to know what is the value of supply and the value of supply in service sector differs from different some of the specific industries and time of supply that is also another concept because intangibility and also there is a provision for the place of supply also interest so all these things are very much required in input tax also we have a unique requirement for the service sectors so legislation it is a common for both here both we can say it is a gst since the levy is nothing but tax on the goods and services so the tax that is a legislation is nothing but your for the goods and services is gst act or sgst act 2017 and with reference igst it is igst act 2017 and this covers the legal provisions and for your procedural requirement we are having a cgst rules sgst rules and igst rules 2017 these are the important if you want to practice or understand your levy of services for your organization or taking it as a profession you have to understand these legal provisions are definitely required these two books are you should definitely go through each and every sections and rules so important sections though we are having a very many sections 140 43 we are having there are common section everything 
some important sections which understand how the tax is levied and how you are pay this tax on account of this we are having this definition the section 2 it covers the definitions for entire goods and service tax act well, where we find there are some definitions are very much required for the tax liability on services then scope of supply there also we are having a scope of so scope of supply and in particular we are having a two calls that is a schedule so one schedule is called your schedule number two and another is schedule number three the schedule number two is nothing but earlier we had a concept called the declared services so there will be definitely certain doubts whether this supply supply or supply of goods supply of services or supply of goods so there will be doubt in the minds of the taxpayer as so generally so for that they have given a schedule number two which is has to be read in conjunction with section 7 and similarly we are having a section 3 that is schedule 3 which is nothing but it is a negative list of services the tax is not levied even though it falls under the scope of supply so that is called your schedule 3 so you have to understand the section 7 as scope of supply and you have to study section that is a schedule 2 and schedule 3 so i will be Definitely my PowerPoint contains all this information. Then the section 8, it is a composition, that is a composite and mixer supply. So there are occasions if the supply is inclusive of the goods and supply or it is a two or three services can be combined. For example, you take the goods transport agency. The goods transport agency also levy the tax on account of the transportation and also loading and unloading and also warehouses. So they will charge it as a single tax levy. So single amount for the bundled services. So all these services are bundled together and they can come in to give, provide this as a single services. So there we are having a definition whether, whether it has to be treated as a composite service or mixer service, mixer supply, because the levy has to be determined based on the which is predominant character. So that is the reason for we are having section 8. Section 13, time of supply, that I will explain in detail. Then section 14, change in the rate. That is also when there is a rate of change is take, taken place. Section 15 is nothing but value of taxable service. By and large, value of taxable service for the goods and the service are same, but except very few when you are dealing with the your related persons. There that is. Then section 16 and 17, these are the basic sections for the input uh, availment of input tax credit. In section 16, we had a minute difference for the availment of service. And 17, as said by our distinguished speaker, some of the services are not available as a credit as per section 17b it is a blocked credit and industry is also asking sir the department has to provide or the dsc council has to understand this is also a essential component in providing the taxable services and the department that is industry and the trade and industry is seeking the advice or waiver or inclusion of certain blocked credit lists for the inclusion as a eligible itc for this that we can say that is 16 and 17 and the section 54 is nothing but refund there also we are having a minor changes with reference to services so there we have to understand these are the important section this today's session is only on account of these sections i am not going beyond that even this section will be a slightly lengthier so in the definitely we know then where the services we are having you know very well the inter there is called the interstate service or interstate supply of goods so you know very well it is a governed under igst act so similarly for the goods in services also it is also applicable there we are having a separate definitions which is a, having a unique feature with reference to interstate supply and interstate supply interstate supply also we are having a, some unique features when it is a supply within india and supply outside india where the recipient or supply recipient or supplier may be in different location within the india and also maybe within Excite that is a foreign countries also possibility. So incoming service we can say import of services and exp exporting services is outgoing services. So export of service and import of services are having some provisions. And here we are having particularly section 12, 13, 14, which is definitely required to understand by any taxable person and other officials also. As well said, this is a very complex because. You know very well there are articles and uh, news are coming the states are saying we are deprived of not provided the enough compensation on account of igst why because there are certain aspects which reference to the assessment if it's improper assessment 
the state may lose the revenue on account of the improper assessment of IGST. That is very important. That's why very many time we are saying in our training sessions for the departmental officers, saying please understand what is the provision, why IGST Act is very much required. Similarly, the trade and industry also understand why IGST Act is required because you are going to pass it on to the levy to the your counterpart where he has utilized this IGST credit on account of either IGST or on account of CGST or on account of SGST. And you know very well there is a cross utilization of ID, uh, ITC also there. This provision of IGST Act will be play a vital role. So that is why we wanted to use the that is we also want to understand what is IGST Act with reference to the services. Important definitions I am not going to give a elaborate definition I am going to identify. These are the definition which definitely require one to understand for understanding how the levy is operates on account of the services in the GST scenario. One definition the important definition is section 2 1 or 2 what is service then what is composite service what is com continuous supply of service in goods we are having a CKD and SKD there the goods can be moved in by different components. In the services also same thing happens. For example, you can take works contract or building construction there. There will be continuous supply of services. And similarly in the telephone operator, subscription for the TV, that is OTT channels. So there is a concept called the continuous supply of services also coming into the picture. Then there is a definition called input services. Then input service distributed, that is another person who is distributing the services, who is maybe a branch office or head office, which receives the services on behalf of other direct branch companies and distribute these services. It is not, please understand, it is not a distribution of goods. Many, many people are understanding that the, the input service distributor is nothing but a person who collects all these supplies and delivers to some other place. That is not the case. He is only receiving the services, invoices, on behalf of others and he pass it on the ITC available based on the documents to the other units depending upon the legal provisions. Then location of the service assistant. You know it is an intangibility is inbuilt in the services. So it is very difficult to locate whether the service is provided in India or it is abroad whether it is in the, India means within the state or it goes out of the state also because IGST levy is there you know. I, the same thing is also required the location of the service. You know, very well, GST is a destination based tax. So, definitely, we have to find out which state is a beneficiary on account of the is rightful person to have the tax on account of the GST is nothing but the location of the supplier of services. Then, mix of supply told, and this works contract, there is a definite de definition is available, and it is also embraced. It is also came from the RGA region of the VAT and central taxes. Then export of services definitely because again again we are saying it is intangibility so we do not know whether it is a considered to be the export of services to qualify you give the refund entitled on account of your services which is exported. So here it is definitely a complex. Then import of services we want to levy the service on account of the it is imported and intermediary services. So here intermediary is nothing but it is an agent you may be working on behalf of the some other person for the provision of services. So there, there is interesting definition, the location of service I told, the non-taxable online recipient. Now this definition also modified because here it is a, earlier it is only a government, now they told the, the different version has been given. Online information database retrieval is nothing but what you are downloading from the website on payment of certain service charges. Like your OTT, uh, OTT and you can say you are downloading some software, you can download some gaming software, so you can download some other software required for the trade, trade also. All these things are called the online information database access. And also now nowadays it is a, there are many people are coming into the particular sector, for example, you can say legal provision, they keep all these informations, allow you to retrieve the database on the changes. That is also called under the online information database access retrieval services. And finally, the words and expressions, if it is not available in your IGST Act, please go back to the GST Act and find whether these particular definitions are available in order to levy the tax on the services. And the, there are some more definitions also given the notification in order to which is not available 
but it is available. There are one notification is called 11 of 2017. There are three notifications important for the tax liability on account of services. One is 11 of 2017 that gives which are what is the tax rate for the services. And that particularly gives a definition for the these in the definitions are very much important because people still today misunderstood what is the characteristics of the charitable activities. The charitable, the trust does not is a different for taxability on account of the income tax and different for the taxability on account of the goods and service tax. So that emphasis you should be understand. Then you can find then at the after sometime we cannot say sir we are uh, we are doing charitable activities and it's a trust no tax liability on account of the such. So that is a false scope. So better you have to understand what are the charitable activities which are exempted from the tax on the GST. Then clinical, this is also a complex service, then education institutions and healthcare. These are the, the you can say it is universal services required for many people. So definitely there will be confusion or we can say complexity involved to understand. That's why there are definites available. Then single residential unit. You know very well the residence is the most important ingredient required for the life in the air. So that also they told what is single residential unit, what is multiple residential unit. Then goods ca carriage, that is another area, goods transport agency we can say, then governmental authorities. Recently there was a modification also happened, what is a governmental authority, service provided by the government, state government and central government and local bodies and there is a one more constitution on account of them is called your constitute that is a governmental authorities. Some exemption was removed and now some exemption was granted and the tax liability on account of the forward and the RCM. Also depending upon the, the characteristics of the governmental authority. This for this please refer 11 of 2017 notification. Then we are having a notification number 12 of 2017 which exempts the payment of tax on the services. Here some of the services also defined because we have to understand there we may be misclassification of services. So in order to avoid that, they have told what is legal service, what is matter, metered cap, radio taxi, renting in relation to removal property, all these things they have again mentioned in the notification number 12 of 2017. So I request my audiences to kindly go through the definition which are available in the section 2 and the section 2 of IGST Act and the notification particularly 11 and 12 and also some other notification 13 of 2017 also from some definitions. So wherever there is a requirement, they will be, you can refer this definition for your levy of tax on the services provided by your organization. Then this is the only one definition which we want to say. Then there will be, we will be asking, what is a levy on goods? Then definitely we have to understand what is a levy on the services. For that, the important service definition is anything other than goods. That is the first thing. Money and securities, but includes activities relating to use of money or income conversion by cash or other mode or one form of this. Here, <coughs> other than this, we can call the interest received. This is activity relating to the use of money. And the chit fund activities, that is also relating to the use of money. And you can say foreign exchange, that is also conversion of foreign exchange. It is nothing but use of money. So that's why they told these things. Money means anything other than goods. And also say, say money and other securities, but includes the activities relating to excluding, but including these things. This is very much required because when you are going for the financial <coughs> tax liability and financial organization like uh, NBS, NBC, call your chit funds, you are going for the micro financial agencies, you are going for the maybe on account of the bank sector and the bank sector, we are having a multiple products are given by them. You want to understand whether these products comes into the category of service, uh, the tax on the services or not that you will be very much required the definition on this section 2, section 1 not, uh, that subsection 1 not 2 of section 2. One second, sir. Continuous supply, there also we want to say this is very much required. Determination of the time of supply, see here very much required. So the continuous supply all means a supply of service which is provided or agreed to provide continuously for a non-current recurrent basis. You know very well under contract for a period exceeding three months. So any supply which is going to apply service, it is going to be continuously given for more than three months. That supply is considered to be a continuous supply. This is very much required when you understand the time of supply for the Libya service tax on the services.
then input service distributor i told this is a very clear definition input service any service used or intended to be used by a supplier so which means in the case of goods we are having two classification one is called the inputs and another is called the capital goods in the capital goods definition is that anything other than input is called as a capital goods and provided the tax on this is not claimed as a depreciation as per the provisions of income tax act 1961 If you are so long not claiming any of these things, but you are capitalized in your books of accounts, then it is called your input on capitals. If you are not recognizing that particular input as a capital expenditure, but you are considering it as a revenue expenditure, in spite of that, it will be treated as an input, not as input. Sorry, in uh, capital goods. That you have to understand. That I said input service. So there will be distribution required. That's why we say an office of the supplier or goods received of the input service are issues of precise document for the distributing the credit so the head office may receiving at the far end of india so we can say in any delhi and their branches is situated across the country and the across the country the auditor will be one person who will be doing all the services for the auditing and finally he will issue the note issue the invoices not for each and everything he will be even consolidated invoices to the head office now the head office has received the invoices but it does not provide any taxable services so as to pay the taxes in that scenario what happens this service distributor receives get a registration in the category of service isd and receives the inputs and takes it in the electronic credit ledger and he pass it on to his branches as per the conditions prescribed under section 16 or 17 as the case may be so this is the you have to understand whether you have to understand you are a distributor or not now we are told if you are providing taxable supply and you are also receiving isd you should take a distinct service tax registration this gst registration one for for isd and another for your what you call we can call it as a normal tax payers if you are going to only distribute that you have to only use the service this isd mode you cannot do that and they have recently the government during 2023 also given a very categorical clarification on account of the whether the distributor is a distributor has to the branch supply between the branch and head office or between the branch and other things whether it is is a distributor registration is required or registration required as a regular <coughs> that circular may be referred to for understanding whether you required to be taken as isd or a regular tax payer then location of service supplier of the service so they say it is a made from the place of business which which registration has been obtained that is the only thing otherwise we can say it is a place other than the place of mints then it is a fixed establishment that is also possible otherwise this may be more than one fixed establishment the whether the place of office or not the location of most directly concerned with the provision of supply so there is a division called you can say wind mills operating the division will be on the maintenance division head office will be in delhi so the maintenance division if it is a nearby any division we can say that principal place of business is only one we can say consider where the predominant service is there that place is called as a location of the supplier of service even though bills are raised from the new delhi the location for providing the service is available in within tamil nadu the place of provision of service is where it is a tamil nadu because it say where the supply is made by the predominantly from which places then inside after such expression usual place of residence of the supplier so here we have to understand whether what is a residence it has to be understand by if it is a corporate or something if it is a individual we can find but we do not know what happens in the case of organization which are having a legal fiction location of service this is also you know very much important or required in order to distribute the collection of is ist among state so location of service they are also given a definition where supply is received at a place of business where the supply is received at a place other than the business where the supply is received more than one place but it has to be considered the same thing in the absence of such a place location of the usual place of residence of the recipient this apart we are having a definite section called your section 12 13 14 which says what is the place of supply of service we will see it later then composite supply and mixed supply i explain it is nothing but a combination it should have been naturally bundled for example in the case of 
I told it is the case of the transporter. He will be giving a comprehensive services. Now we are having a complete comprehensive logistic services. You can say supply chain management, SCM. In SEM case, what they say, they will knock to your door and take all the goods which are you wanted to supply. Then they will take, they will unload, they will keep, they will transport and finally they will distribute to the destination. So here, what will they charge? They will be charging for not for individual services, but they will charge it as a supply chain management service, SEM. So for that, what they would charge? Then here the predominant character has to be applied. And the rate of tax will be applied whether it is a SEM charges or other than SEM charges. So that is the reason we want to say composite supply. If it is a mixed supply, for example, you can go to the theater. Now the theaters are coming. Book a ticket for theater. Then they say, see the movie and also enjoy your food at the food counter. Then both will be charged together. They, in that scenario, the department has clarified it is considered as a composite. It is considered as a mixed supply, not as a composite supply. So here we have to say it is a naturally bundled or not has to be understood then which price is the predominant constitution of the supply. In that scenario, the rate of tax on such service is depending upon which is the principal supply or which is the, which in the, which is the predominant supply. Then if it is a higher rate, then you have to pay the higher rate of services. For example, we can health services. The department has given a clarification. What is the health tax liability on account of the health services? when it is a providing other allied services also. They say the service is not, then you can say in the patient, inpatient they will be supplying food and inpatient they will be supplying charges for the room other than more than fixed rate. So there the department has categorically cl uh, clarified. This is called a composite supply of service. So all these services are together. The main service being the healthcare services. The other services of say for the inpatient and the food for the inpatient is also is exempted in view of the uh, position that the healthcare service is exempted from levy of tax service service the intermediary service here it is very much required we are having um, so many agents that is agency ship is working across the country uh, they are working on behalf of a person which is abroad or he is working a person representing indian person for supply to handle the supplies and other management for the person who is in abroad. There are so many things. The department also clarified which constitute intermediary service. That is, a, please kindly refer, I have not taken that also. That, that has settled the dust on account of the complexity involved on the definition of the intermediary service. Because recently there was a huge cry happen in the trade industry. These, these people say the BP operation is also intermediary services, but the government and the CBAC and based on the council recommend this rule, say that is a BP operation does not constitute a intermediary services for the reason they were given elaborately in the circular. Please kindly go to the circulars. Non-taxable online, it is I told here the levy of service tax, the services is not on the supply, even though it is received in India, here it is a definite person who has to pay the service tax is the person who is abroad. He will be providing the services, he has to Locate an agent at India and he has to pay the amount. For that, it is a separate, that is called ODIR. He is an online data releasing. There, we are having two concepts. If it is a B2B, it is import of services. If it is not other than B2B, which is like for the governmental services and also for the individuals, then it is called a non taxable online recipient. That is our, like me and you, and also governmental bodies. That's why they mentioned if it is used for B2B, it is considered as an import of service or export of service, that is online taxable recipient. Otherwise, it is called a ODIR for which the levy of the service tax on the services on the supplier of the service who may be in the abroad. That is not, that is the reason we are having this particular definition. Then some of the important circulars, I have taken only 2023. We are having a seven years. Now the service tax is entering the seventh year. So very shortly, we are going to 2024. So we know very well for the past several, four, seven years, our experience says there is some clarity required each and every service. So there was a frequent request by the trade and industry and also in departmental officers in implementing these taxation law. So that was taken into account and it was debated in the GST council and finally as advised or recommended by the GST council the notice uh, the circulars are issued as per the provision under the provision of 
section 168. So, some important circular I am not going to each and every thing, time does not permit. We already covered this also in earlier, wherever there is a immediately after the meeting, the DTPs is conducting a definitely one seminar webinar across Pan India and also by their constituting units at the zonal level also. What is the recommendation given by the GST council, GST council after the council meeting? So, 2004, 2-4 notification, clarification it produced taxability personal guarantee. This was one of the contagious issue by raised with the audit earlier period or investigation and it is now settled. Then clarification at the determination of place of service, there is also there was so many queries whether what is the determination of service if it is a combined service for the web portals located in outside India which provides comprehensive services and other services. So, that is required. Then clarification on the related service subclass of the section which means nothing but the amount has to be received in foreign convertible foreign exchange. Now, you know very well Indian currency is also acceptable to a foreign exchange in very many other countries. So, there is a need to modify the definitions accordingly they have modified the section to a definition with reference to IGST Act. Then circular 201 clarified certain services it is also after there are so many services has been clarified under this particular circular. And classification clarification regarding service for the office and organization I told earlier you know how it can be a distinct person how who has to issue you know, invoice and who has to issue a service distributor. This is very much required and again also there was this common expenditure also happening which is divided or distributed among the branch and the, the head office and the head office provide a distinct service to the branch and branch provides a distinct service to the head office. All these things are clarified in the circular number 99 of 11, 2023. Then re-ST rates on the certain services definitely people are asking what is the rate for this. So, these rates are, are also some of the rates on account of this also clarify, clarified in the circular 490. Let us go move into the levy of service GST on the services. What are the factors I should know? So that definitely I am going to my liabilities on service or not and what are the legal compliances I have to make. So I hope this session will go for another 40 minutes. No problem sir. Moderator please. <coughs> Factors for determination of tax liability service, supply, the classification of service and rate of tax, value of supply, time of supply, place of supply. These are the, on based on this, there is a levy. So, if you have to check, check for the each and every parameter, if the every parameter is yes, then you are liable to pay tax on the services you are providing. Then, earlier I told there is a taxable even under GST regime is nothing but supply that's all which you know very well as per the provisions of section 7 of the GST Act. So, this is a supply that for this import of services consideration activities treated as supply and does not include the activities transaction specified. I told I am not going to repeat each and everything and here we it is understood we have to go verify what is section 7 says and they have to read in conjunction section uh, sorry, schedule 2 and schedule 3, which is a negative service and otherwise we can call it as a deemed or declared services or goods, the supply of goods. Then activities as a, the here it is a very much important that is why enumerated which are the items which is covered under schedule 2, transfer, any transfer of right is supply of service, land and building, tenancy, lease, letting out everything is called a supply of service, treatment of process, it is a job work is nothing but your Earlier job work is considered a manufacturer, that manufacturing activity now is a processing activity. So, since the predominant character is a processing, so that processing is comes under the supply of services. Here we are not having a definition is brought into the manufacturer. Here we say if any person is treated in supply which is given by any other person, <coughs> it is a supply of service. For that there is a definite definition what is job worker, what is the process he is doing, whether the job work is a registered person or not, whether the principal is a registered person or other not. These are the factors determining the levy on the job work. Transfer of business assets, every day or by and large now there was going on the acquisition that is a merger and acquisition of the other business. And also now the law is very becoming a very complicated or it will be moving to the definite professional level activities. So, what I find recently is many of the partnerships concerns are converting themselves into the private limited companies 
and the, the partnership companies are now they are moving to the instead of partnership concerns going for a limited liability partnership concerns and you know very well there are happening mergers in many companies and also taken over and also there are some of the verticals which is also going out after the main company in order to handle the small is beautiful concepts here the transfer of assets is nothing but is called a, even though the asset may be a goods it is a deemed to be supply of service thankfully by virtue of notification number 12 of 2000 12 of 2017 under serial number 2 the transfer of business assets partially or fully subject to certain condition is considered to be a supply of service and exempted but you have to ensure the it is ongoing concern then you have to ensure what are the liabilities and these things are taken care of by the agreements then supply of service renting of immobile property construction of complex is supply of service then temporary transfer of enjoyment of intellectual property ipr also comes under the services technological development of computers comes but computer maintenance also comes under this thing computer will be a tang it is not a tangibility computer is comes under the goods but you are developing a software for the computers then it comes under the customization and everything comes under the your tax liability on the service then here finally one of the interesting service agreeing to obligation or refining this is also recently clarified what is agreeing and obligation in during 2022 august this thing since i have taken only particularly circulars i have not explained and here now we can say payment on account of the leaving the job then you have to pay then if you are not performing an act and you will be penalized then you have to pay the agreeing or obligation so that is also deemed to be a service then transfer of right to use earlier it is comes under the it is nothing but higher purchase and the leasing that comes under the transfer of right this is also a services then finally composite supply we will say this is considered as a works contract if there is a works contract is defined in section 119 by of or part of any service any other manner of goods being food or things so they were definitely told some of these things only as a as service composite supply then schedule 3 this is called a negative service list we can say it is a service by employee even it is considered but it is a negative service because he is a salary so here in the course of relationship it does not come constitute a salary constitute a supply but the employee is other than the salary person then it is a considered as a supply of service for example director remuneration there we are always having a problem whether the what is the constitute the director salary whether how it is paid to the salary so now the dust is settled by way of issue of the circular they said if you are issuing as a salary the td is director under head td is director under salary head then there is no levy on the services but if you are giving that amount and td is paid on account of the other than employee that the commission everything then it is definitely comes as a supply of service that is a, it is a taxable supply not fall under schedule number 3 then tribunal and court that is another thing that there is fully exempted and there are some more thing i am not including so i do not want to say other things which is not required right now. then who is the person liable to pay service there is a tax on the gst for the provision of service and we are having a supplier of service receiver of service e commerce operator so these are the persons taxable persons be to g maybe a government it gave me a business to business or to consumer business to government government to business government to government these are the supplier of services then in certain categories of services the registered person services received by a service recipient which we call as a reverse charge mechanism that even though supplier of the services this the burden on the tax liability is shifted to the recipient of service and again one more this calls your e-commerce operator where the e-commerce operators are supplying the services through like your hotel booking and bus booking and plumbing services some of these services even though the service is provided by the uh, some other persons now the liability is on shifted to the e-commerce operators so we want to understand you are whether you are liable to be paid tax or not it also depends upon who is your recipient and through whom you are supplying your service that's why i mentioned these are the taxable persons then list of services we can say only we are given refer notification number 13 of 2017 wherein you want to know reverse charge mechanism because you may not be supplying any service 
but unfortunately you will be receiving the service you will be omitting yourself from non payment of gst thereby you will be unnecessarily losing your hard earned money along with the penal provisions when it is deducted by the departmental officers good transport agency legal services to the business entity software services sponsorship services fees paid to sir, commission paid to insurance agents and we are having some more security agencies it is a recent addition and another recent addition is a rent a cab if a rent a cab is given to the corporate entities then they say that is called the, that there is a limited there is levy is on the recipient of the services registration these are the persons required to get a registration under gst a regular registration is possible then composition levy is also possible for this thing it is said 14 2029 onwards they will introduce composition levy then casual registration if you want to do any services wherein you are not having a permanent establishment you move to that place and you are doing all the services then you are expected to have a registration this is very much required when you are providing a services which is relating to immovable properties and other services enumerated under section 13 wherein the place of service is different from the place of provision of service there you have to understand there we have to understand in the case of for example you can say casual registration is required when you are going to construct a immovable property and you are going to there and you are going to do all this work then there will be a requirement of the casual registration if you exceed if you are taxable value more than 20 lakhs so here yeah, that and we will understand input service distributor explain then under the rcm i told in the previous slide then aggregators he told what is aggregator is nothing but e commerce operators or one another is aggregator is another person then we can red bus we can red bus we can say make my trip we can say red taxis in coimbatore uh, many places or uber all these things are meru in delhi area all these things are coming under the categories of aggregators or e commerce operators that the taxi person will not be owner will not be the pay the taxes rather the person who is providing the service through his portal will be called as a he is liable to pay sir tax and he will be remitting the tax on behalf of that person then special registration for msme sector so by and large the service sector also has so many msme synonymous so state facilitation measures the 10 hour following is medium and is not required of time gst and particularly in the case of services if it is a 20 lakhs for the normal category and the other special type of categories is considered to be the 10 lakhs like our assam and other border areas and the person involved in interstate supply of service i told earlier if it is a 10 hour is below the threshold limit even though you provide the yeah, because registration is mandatory for the interstate interstate supply so here it is a deviation so services if you are less than 20 lakhs and you are providing a service to across the border of state say you need not pay any service tax on the gst then composition scheme and like say central that is goods we are having a 1 crore and we are having a after pay, payment of 1% and in the case of services composition scheme other conditions are remain the same but only the eligibility criteria and the tax rate the eligibility should be 15 lakhs from the preceding finance year and you have your tax liability is 6% if you are a normal person if you are going to pay 18% here you have to pay only 6% but you depends upon whom you are providing the services you have to consider your market your who is your recipient if the recipient is also b2b better you can go not to opt your composition scheme because the composition scheme does not permit availment of itc to your recipient and yourself also there it may increase your cost of supply of services you better understand this position and you can go ahead then exemption from services if your turnover is up to 20 lakhs then there is a no need to take a registration as per the provisions of the gst time of supply there also we are having a concept it depends upon the three parameters time of supply of service provision of supply of service or time of issuance of the invoices these are the criteria whichever is occurs earlier if it is not determined then we have to say bad at what time of these things if any other cases it is deemed to be the 6 months from the date of provision of the service completion of the service so this is called your time of supply in the case of goods once the goods from your place it is over but in the case of services we will be paying the rent rent monthly rent so when you are going to say supply arises the time of supply you once you issue the invoices for the occupation of them 
and similarly in the case of AMC, which is issued for the more than 12 months. There we can say supply and what is the time of supply. Okay, in between there is a change. Then whether the services you have given a agreed agreement for the AMC for 12 year, 12 months. Unfortunately, half of the way the service tax is reduced or increased. Then what should be your tax liability? That also you have to understand from the time of supply. So I have told the date of issue of invoice, the date provision of the service, provision of service, the which the recipient shows the recipient service in his books of accounts in case where the provisions are does not apply, do not apply. Time of supply, this is the concept we can say has been date of issue of invoice, date of payment, if supply of time of supply. If invoice is not issued, date of provision of service or date of payment. If the above do not apply, date of entry in the books of accounts of the recipient. Time of supply, reverse charge mechanism. That's totally told. The reverse charge mechanism, the goods and the service will be provided and takes either 60 days or the receipt on which you paid within the 30 days from the receipt of the supplier's invoices. If not possible, the time of supply will be deemed to be the data entry in the date entry in the books of accounts of the receiver of service. Time of service, whichever is earlier, we can say data payment, 60 days from the date of issue or date of entry. These are the three parameters to determine the time of supply. Value of supply by and large, very same, there is a transaction value. The transaction value does not or the amount provided for the amount is not uh, in consideration of money, then you have to go to the based on the specific rules on account of this. These are some of the rules we can say. Special provision, we can say value in the supply of case of lottery, rule 31. Then rule 32 in respect of purchase of sale of foreign currency, booking of air, air, air travel agents. There they say it is a 5% or 10% in the basic price based on the whether it is an international flight or domestic flight. So even though the tax liability on account of this, that uh, amount you are paid for the freight, passenger uh, freight, maybe more, but the amount for on account of the commission received. If there is a definite agreement for the commission received, you can pay tax on the commission. If you do not find anything, then you have to pay 5% on the base fare. So this is the definition for the special provision for some of the services. And booking, I told there is a, a new lip policy also. Then this is a very complex that is called as a provision of the service, place of provision of service for the domestic transaction, international transactions. So section 12 speaks about the domestic and section 13 speaks of the international transactions. So place of supply of service where location of supplier and recipient in India. The sites told it is a domestic supplies, both are within India. International supply, anyone may be outside in, in within India and another person will be outside India. So here, these two sections are plays a vital role in determining that. Each and every section will require, require a, a separate session involving a three hours at least for understanding this class. I will give the one thing. Why it is important, I told, in the current determination of self bid assigned, which state the revenue has to go. Otherwise, there is a loss of revenue to the particular state. Very many times I told, I repeatedly telling assessment officers, please understand this IGST provision. Taxpayers, please understand the IGST provision. If the IG POP is wrong, now you know very well the GST, GST are to be returns. It is immediately reflected. You are not entitled because of POPS provisions. So you will be definitely know it will be reflected under table number 4D1. 4D2, it is automatically populated and you will not be permitted to take that particular credit. It also gives the indication. So this is very much important for the place of supply. Concept, whether it is available, it is depending upon the two concepts, that is a location of the recipient or location of the supplier. So domestic transaction, the transaction is also below interstate and it is interstate also possibilities. Place of provision also determined based on the parameter called registered person and registered, unregistered person also. If it is a registered person, Definitely we know how the place of provision possible. In the case of unregistered person, that will be decided based on the recipient or it is the based on the supplier of the services. That is the reason we have to get. We also understand one more parameter is the whether the person receiving the service is a registered person or unregistered person. Then there is another thing, a special class where the provision will be based on the nature of the services. So international transaction also 
the same whatever we have taken place in the domestic requires the parameter location of the service recipient and location of the service supplier place of supply special we can say understand 12 it says the provisions immovable property if it is immovable property the place of provision of service place of supply of services where the immovable property is located assuming an architect is in uh, andhra pradesh he want to give the services for the property in Indi, tamil nadu then whether he has to pay cgst as agst depending upon the location of the immovable property okay so here it is very much required if it is a location of the property is different than the place of supplier that is receive supply supplier then we have to apply this so wherever the location is the property is that state is entitled to receive the tax that's why they say this here that state is nothing but here we can say immovable property location is the predominant criteria for the place of provision then restaurant services there are they told it is service can be consumed at the restaurant so which means where the restaurant is located then training performed there are possibilities it is a b2b location it is b2b means registered person if it is a b2c location where the service are actually performed for example you can say there is a training session happening at bombay and there are application received for the registration and a person my company is nominating me my company nominates 10 percent to attend the training then another i am individual i find this is a very good opportunity to learn something okay i can go on my own to bombay and i register myself then in that scenario the company if it is a company then location will be there the person will be going to issue IDS the tax registration certificate that is a invoices as pops either within the state of the registered person means cgst and sgst if the person is the recipient is registered in you know, other than other than the state and he is registered for the training and he is a b2b supplier that is a registered person then he will be issuing an idst invoice sir how it is possible sir he is performing the training sector training at bombay and people are attending there why not unfortunately this is the law which says in the case of b2b location it is please kindly many people many times i find in some of my argue this thing verification without understanding the legal provisions some people are getting the invoices in the name of the state and when they come back to here they will be losing the igst credit on account that as per the provisions of pops if you are registered person you are sending your personal to training in some other places other than your place of business then you please inform that particular performance of this training and perform a person to please issue a igst invoices then admission to the event you know very well you can view these things where the location is providing all this amusement or the admission that is also that place then organization of event we know that is called the exhibition pass and everything and in the case of transportation of goods there are also two distinguish one is called the b2b and is called the b2c if i book that is different if i am an organization that is a different the same thing happens for the passenger transportation also right then place of provision of services service on board conveyances banking and financial services insurance sector these there is a special categories of services here the service in respect of the general class this class also to be followed irrespective of the above sections rules and the determining the place of service advertisement if it is a multi location recently government has given that and telecom services clearly mentioned where the recipient has been registered his place for the receipt of the invoices so place of provision for the services it depends upon b2b and depends upon the b2c it is your before parting this particular provision you have to understand b2b and b2c depends also in determining the place of service place of provision of service where india there also we are having the, the similar provision but we have to understand what is the export of services so here all these six and the fifth conditions has to be fulfilled if any of the one condition is not fulfilled then it is deemed to be not an export of service supply within india the supplier may be located in india but service recipient is abroad but place of supply is not for example a supplier in abroad asks to supply a goods in india what happens so here it happens the person may be there 
but recipient is only in india so the the supply of service comes the export it is not even though he receives a foreign currency it may not be considered as export of service these are my duty informations with reference to legal provision you have to understand this is called the export of services and import of services so here we have to say import of service means supplier should be located outside india the recipient should be in india the place of supply of service should be in india here exemption exceptions we can say intermediary services then place of provision that i told all these things which are the special provisions like 12 these are the also special provisions with reference to if the supplier of services abroad and is a recipient in india so if a person the immovable property is india you are engaging architect what is the liability it is not import of services here it is a service of india so the place of provision of services in india so here you have to pay service tax on account of cgst and sgst under the gst act so all these thing there are so many rights i already explained all these thing the same thing here repeated but only difference is the supplier is abroad that is the only category there the supplier is in the other state but in this case the supplier is in the some other state okay these are the some of the classification of service is an important aspect there it is a hsn code earlier we are not having the sac codes we are mentioning for the service accounting code don't use that code now you please use only this type of codes many people are still following 044 and finally come to the conclusion sir this is not applicable when i am generating e invoices so don't worry you will be definitely wrongly understood about the sac code for the service regime tax regime is different and the gst regime is different we are having the explanatory notes and under the annex sir the notification number 11 of 2000 so this is your explanatory notes which categorically mentions how you have to classify you will not have any doubt if you go out to the sample ex these explanatory notes so all your clarifications by and large it will settle the here you may not be knowing you will be definitely say you will not fall into the trap of litigation on account of the misclassification if you are thorough with this explanatory notes and annex sir to the notification number 11 of 2017 the 11 of 2017 consisting of only four digits in four six digit level we are having the explanatory note which will be much more useful for you to classify if you are unable to classify under the 9954 you want to have a doubt whether it is a 9954 or it goes to some other category this gives us a elaborate discussions absolutely it is a bliss for the classification of services hsn code there is also recommended by wco then it is called as hsn only then here service accounting code example legal accommodation 99823 first two digits services second two digits major nature last two digits after the detailed nature of the services then hsn code for example you can find chapter 99 all services chapter 5 construction services then heading number 9954 construction 99541 construction of service for the building which below and below that we are having one more subdivision even the main classification is 1954 that is one more subdivision is called the construction of service of single dwelling or multiple dwelling means 955411 if the construction is of the road and dam it will not come under the 11 it will come under the 94 it will fall under 99554 but still it will go on uh, go to the other category for the purpose of determining which notification rate of tax i have to adopt recently one person called me and asked sir i am construction is a road sir whether uh, what uh, what is my liability whether i have to pay rcm liability on account of the purchase of cement fine sir the cement purchase there was a that is a reverse charge mechanism under 19 and there is a definite payment when you are purchasing cement if you are not account uh, 80% of the in purchases are made from the registered person for the spillover percentages the recipient has to pay there the recipient is mentioned as a promoter the promoter is defined in the rera act but what is this person this person is a road contractor whether that notification come into play to him definitely not why how how can come to the provision because the 9511 is for the construction services 9512 is for the other than construction service is a dam and the notification very well says about the definition for the promoter he is not the promoter he is a contractor for the government contractor and he was happy sir somebody misguided me they asked me to pay 28% for all the cements i am purchasing locally 
So here you have to understand these intricacies involved. Rate of service tax, there are exemption notification, rate notification, reverse charge notification. Only these are the important notification 11, 12, 13, 17. Okay, this you understand means definitely you will not find any difficulty in complying with their your tax mechanism. So ITC, everything fine except minute. What they say? The class B says he received the goods or services or both, which means without receipt of services, there is a tax liability on account of provision of service because even for the advances, you are liable to pay tax. But in the case of goods, no tax is payable for the advances paid for the goods. For the supply of services, advance comes. There is a distinction. So here, even though you pay the advances, you can take the register that is your input tax credit only after the receipt of the service. That is the completion of the provision of service. So it is a major change. And it, so a distributor, I already explained, 17.5, definitely there are so, so many class. There, some of the services, GTA services, and rent a cab services, works contract services, and services of food and beverage, food, and services on account of the employees' wealth scheme. All these services, if it is provided for the service or provided for the manufacture of goods, it is not eligible as per section 17.5. So both service sector and as well as the manufacturing sector or trading sectors are also affected. Some of the provisions of the 17.5 and they are very repeatedly asking the government and council to consider their component on account of the cost component on account of these and they ask asking the department government to reduce that. The, for example, you can say safari retreat, there is a debate is still going on the Supreme Court. They asked to allow the credit on account of so many other services available or goods available for the construction of the complex, which is subsequently for the commercial purpose. So here you have to understand these informations. Then rate of there is a defund of service services also. Both goods and services, the, all the refunds are available except only one thing. In the case of goods, IGST payment, the, the refund is sanctioned by the designated authorities of the port of exportation. But here, even though you pay the IGST, the tax, the refund will be given by your local authorities. So in IGST, these things, now we have to say the refund is IGST case, inverted tax structure, service is not available. The component will be repayable only on account of the input only. Even though your tax structure in services also says, maybe 5%, input maybe 18%. The input 18% is applicable only when it involves the goods, not on account of the services. There also you have to find it out. Then refund, I told this is the reason that also I explained this. So, by and large I have covered which are the major and the most important concept which is requiring for the services. Definitely we are having some more information. I can also speak and I can also say, but given the time limit, this is, I think we can complete here. And thank you very much for DTPS and the patience of the audience and the organizer that is a sponsors for this particular industry, uh, webinar, Piki. Thank you very much, sir. And we can understand what is scope of supply. There is a difference. The time of supply, there is a difference for the services. Place of supply, there is a difference between the goods and services and classification. We have to read not the HSN of the customs. We have to read the HSN for the service supply. There are some important notification which says for the exemptions and reverse charge mechanism. And there are specific circulars also required for you to understand the levy of GST on the service. So all these things, by and large, I have covered. That is only it is a, a particular this webinar is only enabling you to read more. So I hope I have kindled you to read more on account of services. Thank you once again for the DGPS for selecting this particular subject. Definitely it's a very good uh, subject and also giving me opportunity to present this presentation. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Sri Venkateswaran, for such an exhaustive and uh, lucid presentation. And I am sure all of us have been benefited by it. Now I would invite participants for questions, if any. So give please, me two minutes. please give me two minutes time. I'll join within two minutes. I'm taking some water. Oh, okay, sir. Okay, sir. No problem. By that time, the questions will be in the inbox. Please ensure that the questions asked 
should be relevant to our today's topic and the further the questions can be asked using the chat box Yes, sir, I join. Thank you very much for your questions. Any questions available, sir? I couldn't see. I just no. I think there are no questions till uh, now. Okay, okay, sir. So any questions they can send it to DTPS. Go to the email and we will be definitely clarifying whatever is required by you. Okay. So let us conclude the session. So I think it was indeed a fantastic experience for all of us. In such a short span, we have been enriched with all the information on services in GST. And credit goes to all the presenters as well as participants, without whom this webinar would not have been such a success. To conclude, a sincere thanks to Sri Amish Kumar Gupta, sir, for your time and inputs. Sir, your encouraging words are always a motivator for all of us. We are really enlightened with your knowledge and presence. On behalf of DGTS Delhi Journal Unit, I take this opportunity to propose vote of thanks to those who have directly and indirectly contributed to this webinar on services in GST and overview organized by our department. Also, thanks to Sri Sachin Menanji for sharing his valuable experience and a special thanks to Sri Venkateswaranji for his presentation and his speech that made us understand the topic so lucidly and in such an easy manner that we all can appreciate. In the end, I would like to thank all the participants for their support and time in making this webinar a success. Thank you. Sir.